What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. Let Tim host. Greg, how are you doing? I'm great, Tim, but it's your day. It's your yeah. day as always. Thank you. When you, when you, Thank for you. some reason, the the stars always align. That when you and I are on this show together, something is here. Something cosmically brings Tim to Games Daily. And of course, today is the fifth anniversary of the Nintendo Switch. Happy birthday, Nintendo Woo! Switch! It's, right here. It's everybody. honestly an incredible thing, man, to look back at and what that the turnaround that Nintendo had. You know, like the I feel like the the launch of the Nintendo Switch was a pivotal moment at kind of funny and for right. all of us because it was our first console launch together. For right sure. like you had sure. the ps4 and xbox one but that was at the tail end of us being at ign so we we didn't get to kind of like deal with it and kind of cover it the way that kind of funny wanted to right whereas right. the switch launch that was like a, a crazy moment me and kevin flying out to new york for the big reveal event and like all that it's like there was just so many amazing memories tied to those moments and then they kind of just kept knocking it out of the park that year and then continuing rolling on the last couple of years like it's it's been really cool to see as a nintendo fan obviously the success of the switch continue for to, sure to just climb and climb and climb and uh, a fun thing i can say now uh because the preview embargo's up i've been playing kirby in the forgotten lands and it seems like nintendo might have another fun uh game up their sleeves coming soon there's a demo out today that people can go check out so you can see what i'm talking about game's weird as hell in a, okay. in a very good way it's a lot more mario 3d world than i expected definitely still kind of on the easier side of a kirby game sure. but really really into it so far can't wait to keep playing and man it is it's fucking weird greg it's did you do the thing did you eat the car did you eat the car did oh there's a lot of exhaust mouth, mouthful mode oh yeah oh yeah there's a lot of yeah. mouthful mode Greg. yeah and it's it's, it's an energy an energy that I'm appreciating. If you have any rem- uh, any memory, any interest in the Kingdom Hearts trailers that didn't have sound effects, and you're like, what the? Why would they ever make that choice? This game is if they're like, you know what? If we purposefully commit to that choice and make it weird and dive into that weirdness, there could be something there. And I think there is because that's what this game is, Greg. It's that weird. It's as weird as a Kingdom Hearts trailer. That's weird. That's very yeah. weird. Oh, and and I'm telling you. That is the most spot on thing. When you play this game, you're going to be like, I know exactly what Tim's talking about. But I'm telling you, it's kind of cool. Okay. okay. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Right now, it's a, it's a, the Tim's number one surprise of 2022. Wow. My experience of Kirby and the Forgotten Brow, Lands. Brow. Mm-hmm. I mean, for the record, hasn't the Xbox bought a whole bunch of people and PlayStation 2 like that? But Kirby's saw what that surprised all. you the most? Saw that all coming. Oh, okay. My, My apologies, everybody. But let's get that Xbox and PlayStation taste out of everybody's mouth. <laughs> like I said, it's the Nintendo Switch fifth birthday. F- Nintendo Switch's fifth birthday, which means we, of course, will start with something. Uh, Tim's piqued my interest, of course, with this Kirby and the Forgotten Lands business. But really, what has my Nintendo tail wagon are all these reviews for Triangle Strategy. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the fact that Elden Ring is setting records. We're going to talk about the fact that CD Projekt is pulling out of Russia. We're going to talk about all that and more because this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about if you like that be part of the show on patreon.com slash kind of funny games over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can write in to be part of the show you can get the show ad free you can get the show with the exclusive post show we do and of course you can get a bevy of benefits just like those for the games cast for the x cast for ps i love you xoxo all of our game properties you could even watch live as we record it embargoes pending However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. Of course, you can support us for free and help us out over on the Epic Game Store by using the creator code Kind of Funny. If you use the Epic Game Store, put in the creator code Kind of Funny. If you play Fortnite on another device, if you play Rocket League on another device, if you play Fall Guys on another device, put in Kind of Funny in the Epic Creator Code section, and you can kick us a few bucks. Of course, though, you could also get this show with ads. You could also get this show with no post show, but it would all be free on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, RoosterTeeth.com, and of course podcast services around the globe if you want to be part of the show for free well there's another option for you too you can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later housekeeping for you there's a brand new kind of funny podcast up on youtube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe and it's the sequel to me playing puzzle quest 3 with mike over on youtube.com slash kind of funny plays if that doesn't make sense to you if it means you know, i am you know. on one i am on one i have uncapped unregulated energy 
And uh, from the moment I introduce Nick, the show just goes to the left and never comes back. It never so. comes back. Just everyone go out there and look at the thumbnail of this episode. If that doesn't make you want to watch, nothing will. I mean, let's let's just say by the end of it, we're looking at photos of my mustache dad, all right, when he was mm-hmm. young and hot. Let's just put that out there. Yeah, yeah. It was revealed that Greg had a, a hot dad, which Doesn't is – Does anyone like, want to come see number one crane operator Greg Miller when he was young and hot? You know what I mean? This is your chance. I've never seen a mustache that powerful, and I've seen powerful mustaches in my time, Greg. <laughs> I've seen them as well, but I've also seen a bunch of Patreon producers. Thank oh. you to our supporters, Gordon McGuire, Fargo, Brady, and Pranksky. Today we're about to you by Guild Wars, but Tim will tell you about that later for now. Mm-hmm. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. <laughs> Seven items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. We're starting on the Nintendo Switch's fifth anniversary with Triangle Strategy Review Roundup. Of course, Triangle Strategy comes out this Friday. It's a game I am greatly looking forward to. Tim, see what I did there mm-hmm. with the Greatly? Because it's like Bravely. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, because of Octopath Traveler. Yeah, yeah. it was a stretch. It was a stretch. It was, but it in, was my a head, stretch yeah. in my head, it made more sense. I didn't, and when you start saying it, I was like, that doesn't count. But I loved Octopath Traveler, so I'm excited for Triangle Strategy. Uh, at 9.10 this morning, when I started working on the doc, the Metacritic was sitting at an 83. Uh, a lot of these are still reviews in progress, too. I, I don't think it seems like they gave Nintendo gave a lot of time for reviewers. But... We'll go with who we got so far, all right? Twinfinite gave it a 4.5 out of 5, where Ji Chang uh, Wan said, All in all, I'm a huge fan of this HD 2D style approach Square Enix is taking with these games. Octopath Traveler looked like a souped-up Final Fantasy VI, uh, six, sorry. And similarly, Triangle Strategy looks like a souped-up Final Fantasy Tactics with more modern mechanics and UI. I think fans of the genre are going to appreciate what Triangle Strategy has going for it, even if the character development could use a bit more work. Uh, and the genre newcomers, or those less familiar with it, like myself, this is a... F- oh, I'm sorry, and four. Uh, this is a fantastic entry point with an engaging story to keep you hooked. Over at The Gamer, uh, it got a four out of five. Jade King wrote, Triangle Strategy is an excellent game that expertly combines satisfying combat and a layered narrative to create something I didn't know I needed. Sarah Noah's Sarah Noah Wolfort's journey is punctuated by intrigue, betrayal, and triumph that are all driven by player decisions that actually feel like they matter. It isn't smoke and mirrors on a moral railroad presented on a moral railroad presenting the illusion of choice. It's a ride or die political roller coaster where failing to convince a single ally will result in the untimely death of thousands. I just oh, want to yeah. let you guys know, if you want to sell Greg Miller on a fucking game, that's the sentence right there. It isn't oh, yeah. smoke and mirrors on a moral railroad presenting the illusion of choice. It's a ride or die political roller coaster where failing to convince a single ally will result in the untimely deaths of thousands. Fuck yeah, Jade King. Uh, Games Radar gave a 3.5 out of 5 over there. Uh, Here and Cryer wrote, So while Triangle Strategy soars in its actual strategic battles, it stumbles a little elsewhere. Leading characters are easy to root for in the opening hours, but it's a shame Square Enix takes so damn long to develop actual personalities outside of politicking for the majority of them. Duking it out on the battlefield is a joy, and the voting process for major story-changing decisions is an inspired spin on simply selecting a given story route. But it's a shame there isn't a solid roster of empathetic characters backing up this whole ordeal. And then, just to toss them in, GameSpot.com over there, Tam's site, which is not the number one Elden Ring site, but is pretty great, uh, is giving it a 7 right now, but it's a review in progress. Steve Watts opens his review in progress with this uh, paragraph, which I appreciated. Triangle Strategy isn't the spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics that it appears to be. Though the HD 2D game certainly looks like the venerated strategy RPG, it quickly becomes clear from playing that this is a game that wants to forge its own identity with a mixture of new ideas and streamlined systems. And while some of these improvements make for a better, more modernized take on the 1997 grid-based strategy game, others remove a level of player agency and tactical character development that were vital to making that classic feel so special. Timothy, Robert, Gettys on this fifth anniversary of the Switch. This holy day. Mm-hmm. Where are you with uh, uh, Triangle Strategy? I am really, really happy that it exists. Like, I love the HD 2D games, and the tactics games are, sure. are also extremely very cool. Uh, and looking at this, it's like I love that we're getting a new 
type of this game of a square enix tactical game in 2022 that is this inspired of a, a visual style and i love that they are going back and looking at classics like final fantasy 6 and final fantasy tactics and trying to come out with new versions that aren't just remakes of those games uh but are trying to actually put out new ip and kind of create something new and special i do think it's very square and bizarre that they stick with these weird names and like how is this actually called triangle strategy at the end of the day <laughs> i don't know uh but Obviously, it worked out for Octopath. It seems like these reviews are favorable overall. Um, I think the tactics subgenre is a complicated one because less people play them than JRPGs even. Sure. And I think that when you start looking at who's reviewing them, it tends to be people that really, really are knowledgeable and experts in that field. So I think that they are going to be more critical even than um, – other people because you, you look at some of these reviews and i think that getting a seven um from people that actually really care about the genre is yeah. a lot more meaningful than a seven i think that other people might give uh any other video game right well, does that make sense oh 100 right because if you're into strategy rpgs right you know these things backwards forwards and you understand it and that's why i appreciated and wanted to bring in steve's review in progress in his opening paragraph where he is taking it head on final fantasy tactics as a comparison but for me that works so well because you go back to uh, ji chang over at twinfinite who writes and for genre newcomers or those less familiar with it like myself this is a fantastic entry point with an engaging story to keep you hooked i haven't played many strategy rpgs right or tactical strategy rpgs right like i remember when uh tactics ogre let us cling together came out on psp and i remember re previewing that not reviewing it and playing it for a while and really enjoying it but falling off for whatever reason and so i do feel like i have this blind spot in it or, or at least i'm not so vested i don't have strong opinions about any of it right and so for me reading the reviews today i forget which one of these was talking about the fact and it might not even been that maybe it was somebody else uh talking about the fact that you know like this is a cool game, but like, you know, in the beginning, I haven't, I'm 13 hours in in my, maybe it was Steve, but maybe it was another review. I'm 13 hours in and like, I've only played like eight to 10 story missions. People are just talking a lot and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> <You know what laughs> I mean? the, the, the gameplay is the thing. I'm not sure I'm going to really love, you know what I mean? The, the cause what the, to the whole, um, politicking and choices right i was watching uh destructoids uh review and or no i was reading destructoids review maybe that's where the 13 was and then i watched some of game explains review and they put up like a 14 minute review but they were talking about scales of conviction right and how that plays in this game and so the idea here is that when you get to a major choice in the game you have to have your uh party vote on it and so it's based on what you've done for them and what you say to them. And you have to like win them over to your side and then you do it. And then, yeah, the scales go one way or the other and they lead to massive changes. One of the reviews showed a town getting swept away by a tidal wave. And like you know, one of the reviews talked about, you know, being able to, you could sneak into this thing and do it this one way if you can sell the people on it. But if you do that, it does have bad ramifications for the people of the town you're trying to protect. And like that kind of shit I'm all about. Like that that's really awesome. cool. It, yeah. it definitely sounds awesome for a game like I forgot which review that you just read, but it was the one saying that like the choices don't just kind of feel like you answering a question and cool. That's the way you're going. Like, I, I think that that's a, a pretty novel idea for this type of thing. And I think that that means a lot because tactical RPGs are RPGs, right? Like they have so many of those elements. And I like the idea that it isn't just anime characters talking back and forth to each other over and over and over, which so nonsense. many nonsense. Skip, 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 skip. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and I feel like the best ones are the ones where it's not nonsense and you are yep. so invested, invested in the support conversations and like you want to know what's going on. And then the the major thing about these tactical RPGs is you get invested in these characters and then there's the permadeath or there's whatever situations you're in where you're like, oh, fuck, like I, I care more about the gameplay because it actually has story ramifications um, beyond just what's happening in this mission right here um so really interested in this i'm happy it looks good it definitely seems like we're getting a resurgence of tactical rpgs and there's a whole bunch of them coming out so uh even like different styles of them right we got Mar on the switch we got mario plus uh rabbit's kingdom Rabbids. battle mm -hmm. or not kingdom battle whatever the new one's called souls of hope sparks of hope sparks of hope souls coming, of uh, hope. <laughs> yeah i would love it if they were like they're getting really ethereal with this shit mario's yeah. soul's been knocked out of his body let's go help yeah exactly but that that's coming later this year and uh then we got advanced wars uh, as well so oh, yeah, yeah uh, we do but i mean hey none of those games have this visual style this thing sings man i yeah. absolutely love yeah. the hd 2d stuff like i'm Before extremely excited for uh live a live coming out too I had downloaded the uh, uh, demo forever ago during one of the Nintendo Directs when we were reacting to it, right? And then it's been, smell that, Tim? Review season. Mm -hmm. So I haven't mm -hmm. had actually time to jump in and try it. So this morning I did boot it up real quick to be like, can I how, Can I get into, have, can I have an opinion on the gameplay by the time I get to Games Daily? I could not. But what I was struck by is like, I actually stopped and I was like, 
already the visual style, the music, the way they're telling me the narrative, I'm like, I don't want to rush this just to get to gameplay. I'll wait till I get my review, my copy to go through and actually play through it. Because yeah, I'm into. I want to know all oh, about yeah. this. Because again, Octopath, you know, a, a JRPG is a, a, a it's a rare genre that it's a rare game in the JRPG genre that grabs me. And Octopath had me. Remember, I, I was playing that oh, yeah. games left and right when we, that came out, and all about those stories and seeing it. So I hope the same thing happens here. Uh, like I said, 83 on Metacritic, Critic, critic <laughs> as of 910. Metacritic, meta, then I can't screw it up again. Meta Cricket would be a fun one. There's yes. like a little cricket that tells you what, if games are good or not. Mm-hmm. Barrett, go ahead and buy me Metacritic. Cri- critic, cri- buy me the, cr- the bug one. Buy I, me Metabug. I, 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 I got you a Meta Cricket. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. I want no, a I, I got you one. Where? Triangle strategy is good. Man, thank That's you very much. You Meta that, Cricket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, man. Tim, did Meta you know it? Dot com is coming soon. Is it really? You, Somebody's already yeah, got it? Somebody has it, yeah. Bastards. I don't believe them. If you're watching right now and you have metacricket.com, Greg Miller would like to buy that for a cool five bucks. All right? Thank you very much. And then what we'll do, Tim, is here's what we'll do. We'll get a, we'll get a cr- cricket image. Like a knockoff Jiminy Cricket, and yeah. we'll put it on the site. And then Timmy every Cricket. day at you know, like Gary Wood is like, oh, three million people use Loodle, and he's always like, oh, there's a new, oh, oi, governor, new Loodle about to go live, dicks and balls. Like what we'll do is we'll have the Cricket at twelve oh one every day, put up a new thing, and he'll just say if a game is good or not. <laughs> it just changes like over. He's just like Elden Ring's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I need. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, if you have Meta Cricket, I need that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number two on the rope report. <laughs> Sometimes it catches up to me. And that, there he is. That could be the meta cricket right there. That could be the meta cricket right there. Mm-hmm. He's got really big. Oh, here we go. See? Yes, thank you. Meta cricket is coming in he to speaks. tell us what he thinks of triangle strategy. Yeah. Oh, there it's you go. good. Nailed it. It's good, everybody. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. All right. Winners cool. coming for two more weeks or something. Hold on one second. Now. Hold on one second. I'm going to slack Barrett something else. All right. Because this is top oh, secret. God. This is top secret. Okay. <laughs> Barrett. I'm Barrett. I can't see you on the thing, Barrett. Where? Yeah, okay, here like, you go. Yeah, I'm right Hold here. On. I'm not. Well, I don't want to say it because then somebody will beat me to it. All right. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. So he, the man, was <laughs> yelling Barrett's name. The the man who's on voice chat with us <laughs> to find his Slack. <laughs> <laughs> In the chat, hard to find. Says uh, Greg has been unhinged for a week straight. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> all right, uh, Greg, I'm on it. Thank you. If you can get that for me, that'd be great. Uh, number two on the Roper Report, Elden Ring is the biggest non-FIFA or Call of Duty launch since Red Dead Redemption 2. This is Christopher Dring from GamesIndustry.biz. Elden Ring is the biggest UK video game launch since Call of Duty Vanguard, according to the latest digital and physical data supplied by GSD. Its sales are 2.5 times higher, I'm sorry, 2.5 times that of last week's big new release. PlayStation's Horizon Forbidden West, in fact, oh, sorry, I, I screwed all that up. Let me do it again. Its sales are 2.5 times uh, that of last week's biggest new release, PlayStation's Horizon Forbidden West. In fact, it's the biggest game launch outside of the Call of Duty and FIFA franchises since Red Dead Redemption 2 in October 2018. Its week one sales are bigger than Cyberpunk 2077 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which delivered significant opening sales back in 2020. Note, Nintendo doesn't share digital data. According to GSD's figures, down, uh, digital downloads accounted for over 68% of Elden Ring's sales. <laughs> I'm still laughing while I'm at a cricket. I'm sorry. <laughs> xbox and pc were the biggest digital platforms almost 85 percent of elden ring sales on xbox were downloaded uh and on pc it was 73 percent for ps5 and ps4 the sales were just over 50 percent digital tim Mm -hmm. what's the what is the end of elden ring going to be like the narrative of elden ring is going to be is this game of the year you think guaranteed shoe in for a lot of organizations and then is it going okay okay I mean, I don't even think that's a question. I think that it is guaranteed yeah. for for many organizations. I don't think that it's necessarily going to be guaranteed overall for everybody. Uh, and obviously, even that is a, a dumb thing to say, but you get what I'm saying. For most people, I don't think that it's a guarantee because there's just so many games to come this year that the, the cricket himself might uh, justify as the game of the year above Elden Ring, you know, Greg? I have to deal with this. Like, this is my life partner. Hey, in come on. Come on, man. Like, it doesn't happen often, all right? But yeah, you know uh, that I have something mm-hmm. wrong with me this week. And you're uh-huh. going to tell me we come up with something as good as a meta cricket. Barrett's got the image, and we're just not going to sit here and have a good laugh about it once in a while. I, I, good I, Lord. I want, 
I like the idea of the meta cricket hanging out with with Mr. Ray Tracing and, and Michael Transactions out sure. there, right? Sure. We sure. Want, somebody sure. needs to Photoshop that. Cinematic all universe we have here. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I mean, Elden Ring is incredible in terms of what it's doing right now. Again, like I think it's, I think it's a game that still uh, applies to the Souls audience or people who have been Souls interested for a while, a Souls adjacent, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact that it is the one that's breaking out, it is the one that's crossing over, it is the one bringing in new fans in a way that you know Bloodborne did as well. But now this one is just having such a different thing. And again, this speaks to what we've talked about before, and I think I've sp- talked about it in this show, so I won't bend your ear too long about it. But the idea of, hey. You, something like Bloodborne comes out and it's, you know, for so many people, their favorite PlayStation 4 game. So they talk about it for years and years and years and years. And people, you know, who get into the console cycle late, late, late people who had no interest when it came out and then still don't want to really play and hear about it, though, on their favorite podcast. You get to a point where they're like, hey, there's a brand new Souls game coming out. It's going to have this. It's going to have that. You see people go, well, the other ones weren't my cup of tea. But what I've heard about this one or, hey, I want to be part of the mo- the the uh, groundswell of information here, the, the moment in video games, because, I you know. I think we get caught up in it a lot where we have every week, it feels like, a moment in video games for a fun one where a video game comes out and people really care. But the ones where the world stops and everybody is playing the same thing are pretty rare. And so to have something like this right now where everyone is playing Elden Ring and everyone is talking about Elden Ring. And like when we went and saw the Batman at the, our screening the other night, right, like uh, Brian and Max were there. And it was nice to see them and say hey for them a second or whatever. But when we got to seats and sat down, Andy immediately went to them and crouched like it was like, you know, tiered stadium seating, crouched behind their seats and was just talking to them, Brian, like in the most nerdy detail. But then the giant guy with the sword, he did this and what? And I was like, oh, all right, they're all talking about Elden Ring. And it's just like, I love seeing that. And I love seeing that level of conversation in the Twitch chat, on Twitter, among our own people, right? Of like even Blessing and Mike and Andy going back and forth on streams about it. Like Elden Ring is something really, really special right now. Yeah. No, totally. I, I, I love that. And I, I think you're right that um, it this is a different echelon of moments in video games where people are everyone is just invested in this conversation about this game and what they love about it and kind of just the, the joys of video games. I think it's really cool to look at gaming as a whole and to kind of look back when you look at greatest games of all time list or whatever. And it's like the older consoles, they had a limited library overall, like video games just weren't what they are now where there's like 3,000 of them coming out every week. And with that, it's a numbers game. There is more good games coming out. There's more great games, more amazing games coming out every year than ever before. And I think that's just getting more and more true. So even going to like, is this going to be the game of the year? I think the answer is yes for a lot of the outlets. But I think that it's very awesome that it might not be. There's so much potential Mm -hmm. for other games to come through and kind of dethrone it. And like, that is crazy to me that that, that that's even an option for a game that is, has this much goodwill and conversa- positive conversation uh, around it, right? And it, the same thing's true a couple of years ago with Breath of the Wild, five years ago, <laughs> uh, where Breath right. of the Wild comes out. It's like, oh, man, like this is game of the year. And it's like, well, that, by the end of that year, that wasn't a foregone conclusion, right? Like the, there was a lot of conversation uh, with Odyssey. There was conversation with Horizon. So it's like it's, it's cool that um, – video games are just where they're at now that there is so much amazing shit out there yeah and the fact like you said you know that even though you could easily think that all right cool elden ring you know came out in february and it's going to be the one that is game of the year there are still contenders coming which is crazy because it is the amount of people i'm seeing say elden ring is the best video game they've ever played for and like you know respectable people not morons like me you know the actual people who you know are smart Uh, it's fascinating to see what the hell else could happen this year god of war we all look to you Mm mm-hmm Breath of the Wild. That's not coming this year. It's got a war. No, it's got to. It's got to. Please. You think Breath of the Wild two is coming this year for real? God, I want it so. so. I mean, I I think that both games have an equal shot of either coming or not coming. I think. I think. I don't get me wrong. I've I've been the one like, oh, let's not bet the farm on God of War two coming or Ragnarok coming this year, right? But I think Ragnarok has a way better chance than Breath of the Wild two. But we will have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. Just like you'd have to wait and see if you're not on patreon.com slash kind of funny games over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can write in to be part of the show. You can get the exclusive post show. You can get all of our shows live. Most of the ones we record and whatever. Uh, but you can also get it ad free. But guess what, Jack? You're not watching on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. So here's a word from our sponsor. 
This episode is brought to you by Guild Wars 2 End of Dragon, the third expansion for the award-winning and critically acclaimed MMORPG Guild Wars 2 and the culmination of the Elder Dragon Saga. There's no shortage of new shenanigans to get up to to explore the beautiful Canton continent, travel, fish with your friends in your own personal skiff, unlock nine new elite specializations, pilot the Siege Turtle combat mount, and way, way more. If you're new to Guild Wars 2, don't worry, their community of over 16 million players are ready to welcome you with open arms. If you're already a Guild Wars 2 commander, it's time to gear up for some new adventures, like that Siege Turtle mount I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it can bear two riders, one to handle the turtle, the other to operate the weapon strapped to its shell. That's awesome. What about the personal skiff I mentioned? It's your new home away from home on the waves. Ferry your whole party around to explore, relax, or drop anchor to fish over 200 unique species around Tyria. You can check out the link in the description to get your hands on Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons available now. And we're I'm back. Be real. Yeah. I'm just going to call it, Greg. Yeah. As of right now, as of March 3rd, 2022, mm -hmm. Tim Getty's bets, the God of War, and Breath of the Wild 2 are both coming out this year. Okay. I like that. I bet. will I will I mean I'll take I'll take the other side of that, but only against Breath of the Wild. I don't know how that works when we say it, but I guess it, like I think God of War can we just let less I mean well, I well, would bet, bet that God I'll bet God of War comes and Breath of the Wild doesn't. Yeah. The only the, what, what what I feel about this, the reason I say this is I think that there's been obviously a lot of delays the last couple of years, like a lot of major yeah. delays the last couple of years. But there's also been a lot of surprises of games actually coming out, despite the fact that we're all like, there's no way that's actually hitting that. Sure. And then they do. So I think that we're a little closer to that side of the conversation when it comes to God of the War, God of the War, God and, of the War, and, and and Breath of Wild too. So yeah. Okay. I'll allow it. Every mark it down. Remember March third. 2022. For now, remember number three on the Roper Report, we're going to talk about CD Projekt Red versus Russia. CD Projekt Red put out a tweet today with this statement. In light of the Russian military invasion, I'm sorry, just CD Projekt. I always do that. I always want to add Red for some reason. CD Projekt, the overall company. In light of the Russian military invasion in our neighboring country of Ukraine, until further notice, the CD Projekt group I want to say right again, uh, has made the decision to halt all sales of our games to Russia and Belarus. Today, we begin working with our partners to suspend digital sales and cease physical stock deliveries of CD Projekt Group products, as well as all games distributed on the GOG platform to the territories of Russia and Belarus. The entire CD Projekt Group stands firm with the people of Ukraine. While we are not a political entity capable of directly influencing state matters and don't aspire to be one, we do believe that commercial entities, when united, have the power to inspire global change in the hearts and minds of ordinary people. We know that players in Russia and Belarus, individuals who have nothing to do with the invasion of Ukraine, will be impacted by this decision. But with this action, we wish to further galvanize the global community to speak about what is going on in the heart of Europe. To our brothers and sisters fighting for their home country, stay strong. Hell yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Go get them. And then on the other side, uh, Pokemon tweeted today, uh, the growing crisis in Ukraine and Eastern Europe, which continues to cause the displacement of families and threaten the safety of children, is heartbreaking. The Pokemon company is making an immediate donation of 200000 US dollars to our partners at Global Giving to provide humanitarian relief. The nonprofit, nonprofit will efficiently direct the funds to community-led organizations supporting families and children affected by the crisis. You can learn more by going to globalgiving.org. Love seeing this games industry getting involved in shit that is really really serious of course yeah and it's that thing of like you know it's what we at kind of funny have learned over the years right of like if you have a modicum of power or influence you should use it for good and that means standing up for stuff like this and saying what's happening in ukraine is a bunch of fucking bullshit and russia needs to be stopped and so yeah like does suspending uh video game sales in a country mean that you know putin's gonna immediately roll over and be like well all right cool i can't play the witcher fuck off you know of course not, but it's a statement. It's a statement of support. It's a way to say all this stuff, and it's a way also to get, uh, you know, when the, uh, the Ukraine invasion began, right, there were so many videos of Russians in Russia marching against this and being like, we don't want this war, right? It is also about galvanizing uh, the people inside of Russia to be like, hey, we really don't want this. We need to speak up. We need to not be afraid and try to work on that and try to work from the inside for change and stuff like that. And so I know that, like, it's easy to be cynical and be like, whatever, who cares? It's video games and yada, yada. It's like, it's people using the soapboxes they have to stand up and say, yeah, this isn't right. And this needs to be stopped. So more power to CD Projekt Red and Pokemon for that. Mm -hmm. 
Number four, back to the games industry as you know it. Uh, number four, uh, Sifu is selling strong. They put out a tweet this morning. Three weeks after Sifu's release, more than one million players have embarked on their path of revenge. Thank you so much from the entire Slow Clap team. We are hugely grateful for the amazing reception, uh, and we can't wait to share more info on, upcom- or on upcoming updates. Heart, hashtag Sifu. Oh, God, this makes me so happy, Greg. I want this game to succeed so bad. I want more DLC. I want a sequel. I want it all. Sifu is good. Thank you, Metacritic. You, critic. Cricket. Crick, God cricket, damn it. Cricket. It's ah, hard. It's like, harder than it's it thinks. Like Tam and Pommy all over again. Ah! But anyways, I, um, I, I, I'm so so into Sifu. It is my game of the year. I'm going to be shocked if it gets dethroned on my personal list uh, by the end of the year. And I... I'm very excited about this. I'm excited for any update that they have. I do think it's a little weird. They're a small team. So I think that that's something that we need to always remember. But like, I think it's weird the amount of updates and announcements we've heard about from their tweets recently. And it's like things aren't actually coming for a while. And yeah. it doesn't even sound like what they are is substantial in, in ways that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like I, the, the Chinese uh, voice acting probably should have been there from the beginning. But you're a small team. I get it. The uh, different costumes they're unlocking and stuff cool potentially but when are we actually going to see them we'll see but regardless this game is fucking incredible yeah i'm in the same boat right of like they've talked a lot about it i'm stoked for this accessibility stuff they've talked about or both approachability and accessibility right of adding difficulty modes uh, easier which is getting me it makes me more excited to try uh based on your guys's review where you're talking about your hands hurting and like you know playing for hours trying to get through one boss i'm like that ain't my scene but if i can go through it a bit easier and try it out that way i'm stoked for that so yeah, it is. A, yeah, I, I will be interested to see what their cadence of uh, rolling these patches and updates out are. But good for them for doing it and communicating. And as long as they stay on it of talking about when stuff could be coming, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five for you. This is a quick one. Uh, the BAFTA nominees are in. Uh, of course, these are you know the BAF, the twenty twenty BAF, twenty twenty two BAFTAs. They're for the twenty twenty one games. At this point, you could probably close your eyes and remember wh- who's going to be where. But I gave you two categories. You can go look up the rest if you like. Uh, overall, the best game uh, nominees for BAFTA twenty twenty two are Deathloop, uh, Forza Horizon five, Inscription, It Takes Two, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Returnal. Then, in a category you don't see in the Game Awards or the Dice Awards or usually in the individual awards for like an IGN or Gamespot, the BAFTA twenty twenty two nominees for British game uh, Alba, a wildlife adventure which i adored i played that on playstation of course that was an apple arcade game but it came to playstation and i played it there uh death store uh fights in tight spaces uh forza horizon 5 overboard another game i really enjoyed on switch that was that one i talked about which was like you know it changed it uh, you had to go through and like it was a, another loop game where you had to figure out how to get out away with murder uh and then sable so there you go all the death store fights in tight spaces forza horizon 5 overboard and sable for bafta's 2022 nominees for british game Hell yeah. I'm going to be interested for, I know we're just talking about this, and so I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here. I'm going to be interested, Tim, for uh, this year's game game awards, game of the year, but not really game of the year, even though I guess so, like we're talking about, where is it going to be Elden Ring? Could it be Sifu? Could it be God of War? Could it be X, Y, and Z? More the fact that I think there's so many high quality games coming out, I really th- wonder if the individual categories are going to get shaken up more. You know what I yeah. mean? Because like the bat, mm-hmm. like again, why I, I boiled this down the way I boiled this down is like, there really aren't that you've we, how many times have we seen it this time around where you can go through and be like, oh, you know, Death Loop's going to be in there. You know, this is going to be there. You know, that's going to be right. I throw it in here. It's like 20, BAFTA 2022 nominees for artistic achievement. The Artful Escape. It takes two. Psychonauts 2. Ratchet and Clank. Resident Evil Village. Returnal. Again, great games. I'm not trying to take away, but I feel like these are all copy and paste from different lists into the same list, if that makes sense. Am I making sense to yeah, you're totally making sense. I, I don't know that we're going to get that much variation this year compared to that, though. I just think that it's going to be a different type of of list where I, I one of my predictions for 2022 is that we're going to get more. IGN is going to give more tens than it has before. Yeah. And I think that that is going to be the case here. And I imagine that those games are going to be on everyone's list. Right. And that's going to sure. take up if we're only getting six entries, like there's a potential that what, three, four of them are those games and so i think that that's kind of going to be standardized across a lot of a lot of people's lists but i do think that when it comes to more individual people's lists that's where things are going to really start to shake up and with how we do our game of the year stuff i think it's going to be really interesting to see how it shakes out because i think there's going to be a lot of checks and balances between all of our personal taste which is i think really cool and a good representation of what an outlet's like favorite games that year can be yeah that that is going to be fascinating for us and see 
who can pull it out there when you get into the kind of funny game of the year and how we break that up and how many people we have voting and who we have voting and all these different things to see it shake out. It's going to be an interesting year, and it's only March, the beginning mm-hmm. of March. That's yeah. ridiculous. People bring it up Starfield in the chat. I always forget about Starfield. <laughs> like, that's... I love a good Bethesda open world. I, I, I But I feel like... We're, I'm Denny Green at the podium, right? They are who we thought they were. I feel like I know what I'm going to get from Starfield, and I can't wait to play that. And I wonder if that just won't in 2022. That won't be good enough to be game of the year. If, if like you know this usual buggy Bethesda wandering around kind of thing, if it doesn't, or what if I'm wrong? What if they've actually gone in and really polished it and really done it, and it's going to be at its core, obviously a Bethesda game, but the best looking, best running, best playing one of all time. Because if you did that, then I think, yeah, you have a huge competitor for I make another Elden bet. Ring. I make a bet yeah. right here, similar to Tim's uh, bet prediction. I don't think it comes out this year. Really? Yeah. It's it's 2022. It's still this pandemic. I definitely am right there with you of like, you could tell me any game's getting delayed. And I'd be like, yeah, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, to, so to sit here, it's just the fact that they put the date on it and they were so confident and they got out so in front of it. And I realized I am the number one guy who is usually the one who's like, that's going to get delayed. And people are like, come on, they put a date on it, Greg. And I'm like, eat shit, motherfucker. <laughs> Dates don't matter. Like, obviously, that's the same case here. It's just the fact that for such a big game from such a big company, I wonder. But it totally plays right into what, you know, Phil, Xbox and Xbox Studios and now Bethesda's part of them are all about. I'm like, guess what? We're not hitting that date. It's coming sometime next year. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry, actually. It's not good. We don't want to just push something out. We don't want the team to crunch, so they're going to take their time and do it. I could easily see that, but yeah. I hope not. Yeah, I'm with you. I do think it's it's going to come out. Great. Here we go. Here Ladies we go. and gentlemen, it's happened. Barrett Courtney has done the impossible. You can go on Twitter right now and follow meta underscore cricket for your daily dose of what game is good or bad. Daily Elden Ring dose. is good as of today. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm going to go follow meta cricket right now. I'm very impressed, Barrett. You I wonder did, did. what are the what are Metacritic's thoughts on Marvel's The Avengers? Well, you know what? He only mm-hmm. talks once a day. Yeah, only and, once a day. Uh, <laughs> we don't need to get into we maybe, don't need to get into we'll that. We'll find out sometime this week what Metacritic. You know what? You know we don't need to get into that. We don't need to get into. I'm more excited for him to talk about Martha is dead. <laughs> all right, that's what I'm excited for. Metacritic, <laughs> Metacritic to weigh in on Martha is dead. All right, Barrett, I will need you to send me that PSD so you and I can exchange duties on this. Um. Uh, <laughs> number six on the roper report haven the video game is adding same-sex couples this is a press release from uh the game bakers themselves the game bakers is thrilled to announce their new update for haven their award-winning romantic space adventure featuring you and k a couple of lovers fighting to stay together while the whole world wants them apart with this free update players will now be able to choose which you and k they want to play as they can play as the existing you and k woman and man as two women you in an alternate version of K or as two men K in an alternate version of you. You can see the new trailer on YouTube explaining all this. The update was special to the team at game bakers as explained by Emmerich Tho, creative director quote. Haven is about the freedom to love whomever you want from the very, very, from the very early days of conception. We had created several couples for the game with a diverse range of relationships, but the constraints of our indie team production made us focus on you and K only after the game launch. We wanted to go back and work on this update. We hope that many players will feel better represented in the game, end quote. The update does not change the story arc of Haven. Players still play as you and K, but the game offers more options as the composition of the couple. Uh, if the alternate characters share a similar look with the original you and K, they have been recreated to the standards of quality of the original release with, uh, with only with two new fantastic actors giving life to the characters across all 80,000 lines of dialogue in the game, new models, and the whole in-game art. The free update is on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series, and uh, Nintendo Switch. To celebrate with the update, Haven is 40% off. Uh, Haven, of course, a game that was in one of the kind of funny game showcases. I believe the PAX East one, uh, or you know, the PAX West one we did. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful game. One I didn't beat, I had started playing, I enjoyed. It was, you know, you're, you're flying around, you're doing this thing, you're making love. You're being lovers in a dangerous mm-hmm. time. G- gave me a lot of saga vibes to it. And I m- mainly bring this up because this is an awesome thing to do. We talk yep. all the time about like, you You know, we just talked about Sifu, right? And a, a small team probably should have Chinese in from the beginning. You do now. That's great. Keep working on it. And here you have to give a round of applause, I feel, to the game bakers to sit here and be like, all right, cool. Haven, a game that like didn't set the world on fire. You know, it's a, it's a video game that like, don't get me wrong, people like, but it's not like it did Elden Ring numbers or something where you sit there and you're like, well, now we need to commit and double down to it and actually work through this, right? This is a game that, according to Steam, came out on uh, December 3rd, 2020. And that's what uh, Wikipedia is saying, too. So it's been 
out for a while. The fact that, you know, the game makers, a uh, independent studio believed enough in this and thought this was important enough to go through and do this is awesome. And mm-hmm. it is awesome. It's a great way to go through and make sure that people can play the game the way they want to play the game. This is what we keep coming back to, Tim, whether we're talking about accessibility, whether we're talking about approachability, whether we're talking about uh, just being a minority and playing video games. Like to be able to at least see something you want or something that is you reflected in the video game is always important. Number seven, this is a rumor mill one. And I put rumor mill in front of it because I know people were tweeting me. People were all about this. They were, you know, they wanted, they wanted to be over here about this. They wanted to be all over it about it. And I refuse to get excited yet, Tim, but I'm going to talk about this, but I refuse to get excited. Okay. That's fair. Number seven, this is a rumor mill. Don't get excited. Everybody. This is a rumor. Take it with a grain of salt. Infamous and Sly Cooper might be in development for the PlayStation 5. We go to Dual Shockers. One game? MD, Armageddon. No, two different games. Two different games. Uh, but, Infamous uh, and Sly? I'm in. MD over there says, according to popular industry insider ACCNGT, a sequel to Infamous and Sly Cooper is reportedly in development. While many might not be aware of who the info leaker is, it should be noted that they have quite a credible track record. The leaker revealed details about Star Wars Eclipse several days before the entire reveal took place, and since then, a number of scoops have been correct. More importantly, the recent Fantastic Beast trailer delay was called beforehand as well, and that turn that too turned out to be true. So what happened is account and GT tweeted uh even with some delays and some console exclusives it should be a great year for playstation players with the announcement and release of some playstation ips that does their return a new event is definitely planned this month and this is from from march is when he's tweeting about this and they won't be announcing all their surprises uh they, then account ngt quote quote tweets its own thing and says i can corroborate that a new sly cooper and a new infamous are in development I'm putting it out there. Yeah. Is it even worth talking about? Of course not. It's taken with a grain of salt. I want it to be on your radar. And I know all of you, each and every one of you go to sleep every night and you say, what, I was going to say, you, you do the sign of the cross. You, do, you, you don't believe in God, whatever. But you say a prayer to maybe your wife, to God, to the Metacricket himself. Mm-hmm. And you say, give us another infamous Give us even just a remastered infamous. That is that give us the infamous collection with new trophies. You mm-hmm. say all these things to Satan, whoever it is that you meet, you know, Mrs. Buttersworths, whoever you worship, you say this to them. You know what I mean? In hope that the karmatic, the karmatic gods of the world, really, the stars align, <laughs> that everything goes the way yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah. That the meta cricket will one day say that's like Cooper Five and that infamous ps5 are good games that's meta, all we want meta cricket do you think this is true no oh damn damn nah he doesn't you know meta cricket doesn't believe it yeah apparently i mean here's the thing like this the rumor mill all the stuff is it true is it not true like the fact is it's coming from somebody that's gotten things right before and yeah. that does not mean shit at the end of the day because the amount of times people got one thing right and then trying to like get some notoriety by continuing to say things get followers and then yeah. just fucking make up yeah. a bunch of bullshit that's very very frequent having said that is that would this news be surprising greg i think that's the the bigger thing i was thinking about it infamous like is there really room for infamous in sony's ip library at this point especially when they have access to a real superhero in the form of spider-man and yeah. a successful franchise there right but looking at the list of best-selling playstation 4 games infamous second son coming in as surprising number nine overall yeah. at six million sold like that's that's not a, a small amount and sure it's been a, since march 21st 2014 but when you start looking at the games above that on the list it's a lot more frequent things it, it, or recent things not frequent uh recent games coming out that like playstation just has that install base it has the notoriety now of what playstation studios means that wasn't the case back when infamous second son came out right sure so sure. i think that uh, an infamous nowadays i can totally see hidden 10 million easy and that's a huge number here's my question though is like do you think if the, so like there's a lot of different things on this i find it incredibly hard to believe that they're making a new infamous number one because life just kicks me around when's the right time any you know when's the last time anything went right for me i got a whole i don't know i don't know where the monkey paw is but i have it where i'm like I, give me a superman I mean, game we and they're like okay the here's a fucking suicide account. squad goddamn game where you're gonna fight yeah. superman you have to kill superman great that's not exactly what i wanted not really stoked to be King Shark, right. but cool. Whatever you're doing, you know what okay. I mean? So I would be I, – I, you're saying would I believe it? Is it outrageous? Whatever. Like I'm with you that I think 
I would have been if you're something infamous is coming, I'd be like, oh, they're gonna do a remaster, or and I mean just an HD, you know, or, yeah, remaster, not a remake of Infamous One and Two or whatever. I would believe that. Okay, cool, toss that out. That that I could see coming. A new Infamous, I'm with you. Of like, well, how many superhero games does Sony need, especially when they now have this established relationship with Marvel? They already yeah. have Spider Man. They're about to have Wolverine. Why wouldn't you keep doubling down on that and try to do that? I would love for them to try to make Infamous matter, but I think Infamous comes from a different time where when Infamous hit, it was awesome because super licensed superhero games sucked for the most part. And here was Sony being like, we're going to do our own and have a... And now, now superheroes are everywhere and they're ubiquitous. And like, do we really want to create a superhero when you could just go partner with whoever and get it there? I, Who's making the Invincible game? And, and that's my thing, Greg. It's like, like, I see people in the chat being like, well, why why can't they have both? Like, that's a, a bad argument. And it's like, I get where you guys are coming from, but I think my point is cool if infamous second son was at six million and i think that this could get to 10 million you put a marvel game character on it and we can potentially get to 20 million so that's why sony would be looking at it and be like well maybe not do that necessarily whereas something like sly cooper where it is another mascot platformer with its own distinct style compared to something like a ratchet whatever i think is a, a smaller investment for the the teams to to create and then also i think that there's just a little bit more room for multiple of those type of games to to sell at the range that they are are meant to to the playstation audience and and families and and whatnot especially as playstation wants to build out its characters more as we see playstation uh production studios for the tv side movie side and then also game side of like they want their characters to mean something for the playstation brand um and i think that they want more more Aloys out there, right? They want more Kratos. They want more Nathan Drake. So um, I, I think that it'd be wise for them to bring both of these franchises back in some shape or form. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And like that's, you know, video games are the matrix, right? It's just this circle going around and around. We really have the same thing over and over again. So like there will be another Sly game. When that'll happen, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe this could be, it seems... I just don't feel like, in a sadly, Sly 4 set the world on fire. So I don't know if you, I mean, granted, now Ratchet and Clank is in a different place with what they've done, right? But like, is that what would happen? Is that where we're going to go? Like, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. and then it's a, yeah, Infamous, I, I would adore a new Infamous. My other question about the, a new Infamous is like, so are you having Sucker Punch do that? Because I would think they'd go straight into Ghost of Tsushima 2. And, I, and honestly, I think that would be the right call for them. So then is it Sucker Punch has a second team that's in pre production? Is it going to somebody else? And then he started getting into a weird thing of like, not that I by any stretch of imagination think that Infamous, this superhero game, is such a unique idea that no one else could do it. But it's like, okay, then you're just doing it. But again, like, why wouldn't we go off and do stuff? You know, why wouldn't we go off and do this stuff? Over here? Yeah. You know what surprises me, Greg? What's that? As far as I can tell right now, the last data we got on The Last of Us Part Two sales numbers was just 4 million. It was okay. the fastest first party PS4 exclusive ever with more than 4 million copies sold as of June 2021. But then we never got an update after that. That's surprising to me. I wonder that is why. Surprising. That is surprising. Because you got to imagine it's way up there on the list. But when I'm looking at the, the list on Wikipedia, it, it's coming in at like number like 12. Do you think the discourse halted sales? No way. Like that's, I just I don't buy that. Like I, It must be higher than that. Last of Us Remastered is at 10 million. I, I guarantee Last of Us Part 2 has sold more than 10 million copies. So I don't know. Interesting. I'm more, I, I understand what you're saying. I can't even think about that right now. Cause when we were talking about, I was like, I don't want to play King Shark in this game. People, somebody in the chat said Samoa Joe is King Shark. Is that true? That can't be true. Up. Hold on. In I'll the, just call Samoa Joe. Really? I feel like he's going to call Joey Noel. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Samoa Joe, this is Greg Miller. You're live on Kind of Funny Games Daily. How are you? I'm excellent, sir. How about yourself? I'm good. The chat just threw me a curveball here. Now, okay. and think, are, are you King Shark in the Suicide Squad game? Somebody said that in the chat. And this, I, it, it would make sense because there was the whole fandom thing that happened. when. I, but I had a baby. I don't know. You know, you didn't send me anything. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. A lot of excuses. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. You know, um, gr- you know, Greg, uh, my good friend who obviously supports everything that I do and is always really out there, you know, cheerleading me on. I really appreciate that, by the way. Just saying, you know, uh, Austin Creed sent me a gift for my son, but it's no big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he would do that. I mean, you do keep contact with him, so it's easier to know that you still like him and stuff, but that's cool. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of involved with that project. You could say that. And, uh, um, yeah, uh, I, I am the shark. 
Oh, well, all right. Congratulations. Now I do want to play as King Shark. I'm, I'm proud of you. Uh, hey, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Great to hear from you, man. Wow, it's been a while. It hasn't uh, been that long. We did that whole... Remember when we did the Battlegrounds thing? That was during the pandemic. It wasn't that long ago. Well, if you want to count that, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it was a work-organized type of thing. But yeah, you know, awesome. Cool. Yeah, and uh, here we are. What again. do you want? Do you, what, you want me to check in once a week? What are you playing right now? What, you, I, hey, listen, listen, listen. Listen, I just want you to be the best you you can be, Greg. I mean, that's all we can ever ask from anybody, right? Yeah, that's true. <sighs> You want to come? You should come host games daily sometime. How about that? Is that good? Is that or is that too much you know work what? for you? You know what? You know what? You know what? I think we can work something out, man. Okay, I good. Think, I think I think that can make me show better. All right, good. All right, then I'll I'll hit you up and we'll talk about that later. Right on, brother. Take care, man. All right, bye. Love you. See ya. What the actual fuck, Greg? Well, chat, you've convinced me. I guess Samojo is King Shark in Suicide Squad. I'm sorry. Also, the Again. cricket confirmed it as well. Oh, the cricket confirmed it? I missed yeah. the cricket. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't even need to call. I didn't even need to call. I apologize. I didn't need to call. The, the cricket could have confirmed it. There, there it is. And then, yeah, he is. There he is. I nailed it. Huh. That was that was incredible, Greg. <laughs> what is this energy you have right now? How do you have secrets? How do you know, do that? I don't know you at all. Do you not know that I know Samoa Joe? No. I know you did oh, really? a thing with him at one point. You've done oh, things dude, with Samoa a lot Joe of goes way back. He's the best. I love that. That is amazing. Like, if you want, how much time we got in the show? Yeah, I got time. So Samoa Joe, like, you know, well, first, so when he was at TNA, I had gone down there and done a TNA uh, thing where Gruesome Greggy went and was trying to be a professional wrestler and yada, yada, yada. And the Motor City Machine Guns, if you remember, they shot me in the chest and broke all the blood vessels in my chest. So I had a perfect handprint of there. I think it was Alex Shelley. Um, But then that's where I met Joe and hung out and started talking to him. And it was like one of those things where, you know, there's a bunch of cool people there, but Joe like knows video games and knew knew IGN. And so it was this thing where we like hit it off and we're talking and blah, blah, blah. And so we occasionally would, you know, drop a line or talk about whatever and yada, yada, yada. Also, interesting side note to that TNA thing. That is when I met Austin Creed for the first time, except that we both forgot we met there. And I had to go back after we became best friends, like years and years into our knowing each other. I went back and watched the video and there's a thing where I try to pick him up. Like I, I try to pick up Austin and I can't, I, I could clearly do it. I'm Greg Miller, but I act like I can't for the gimmick or whatever. But it's like we both for, totally blocked that out of our memory that we met there and then we met at E3 and acted like that was a new thing. And wow. so, uh, yeah, Joe was great there. And then this, the follow-up to that is that uh, you would then jump, I don't know how many years later because time's a flat circle. Uh, but it was E3. I had finished up at IGN working late and everybody, of course, was over at the FIG. And so I went over to the FIG. I met Christine. Uh, I, she came to get me to show me where they were. And as we're walking back there, she's like, yeah, there's this guy you got to meet back here. And I'm like, okay, why? What, what's his deal? And she's like, well, he likes wrestling and he's Samoan, but he's just awesome and everybody loves him. And so I, I walked up and it was the first time I had seen Joe in years since the TNA thing. And like, it was one of those things where the crowd parted and I, I joined the circle. And as soon as I got there, he just goes, gruesome Greggy. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. He remembers the name and everything. And We've been fast That's, friends ever since. I've never heard that story. How is that possible? You know, I'm an ocean of secrets. All right, you really are, Greg. Yeah, you know what I mean. <sighs> oh, man. I'm excited well, to hang out with Samoa Joe again, uh, Tim. But that's mm-hmm. so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grab shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show host each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today, Beholder 3 on PC, Babylon's Fall on PC and PlayStation 4, a musical game on Switch. Uh, this is GTA Online's update. After last week's lucrative security contracts, the stakes are raised for agency work in GTA Online. Payphone hits will now reap an extra 50% GTA bucks and RP uh, while completing three of them will award players with a GTA 200k bonus bucks bucks bonus. Uh, Saffron Fields is out today on Steam. Farm Manager 2022 is out now on Xbox Series X slash S and Xbox One. And then Deliver Us from Evil Gothic Otum Visual Novel is launching today on Steam. Uh, new dates for you. Defend the Rook saves the day on Switch April 14th. And then Farming Simulator 22. Not to be confused with Farm Manager 2022 that I just read is out today. Farming mm-hmm. Simulator 22, uh, the Precision Farming Free DLC for PC and consoles will launch on April 19th. And I yeah. do want to reiterate the Kirby and the Forgotten Land demo is out and available to everyone now on Switch. So you can go and and, and check that out. I said that quickly in the I, beginning of the show. but I, I understand to that and I'd like out. to believe you, Tim, but we have given the wheel over, not to Jesus, but to Meta underscore Cricket on Twitter. Uh, Barrett, can we check with Meta Cricket and see, in fact, if the Kirby and the Forgotten Lands DLC is out today on Hold the on. Nintendo Switch? Right, I got I to gotta hit up Meta Cricket, see if he's ready to come back. 
I appreciated uh, that. And I, I believe you. And I did the same Google search for an image you did to find Metacricket. Uh, but then I, after you showed Metacricket the first time, somebody's like, that's not even a cricket. That's a grasshopper. And I was like, you know what? It. Don't think about it. I, I don't. It. I don't. It's, it does show up under cricket bug. Thank you. It is out. And I'm like, you know what? That's Metacricket. Meta cricket. Meta cricket doesn't have to be a cricket. It's yeah. just he's Metacricket. Mm -hmm. So what if the spokesperson for Metacricket is a grasshopper? It's kind of like how it. Carfax has Car Fox. It doesn't make any sense. Deals of the day for you. Uh, Xbox free play days are back. Hone your skill, hone your angling skills this weekend in free play days. Uh, Bassmaster Fishing 2022 and Rims Racing are available this weekend for Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members from today right now until Sunday, March 6th at midnight. Like I said, it'd be Monday at midnight. I mean, that's such a weird time. They put Sunday, March 6th at 11.59 p.m. PSD, but I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a nerd and say it. Yeah, yeah. I got it. You get it. You understand me. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the world. Uh, nanobiologist puts in a correction here. I don't... It's, okay. Greg says that people took to the streets in Russia, but people in Russia are still protesting the war. It hasn't stopped, especially with the increased sanctions. I don't know if many people read what I said as it was like a one-day protest, but I appreciate it. I'll take it. Fine. Okay. Whatever you say, Nana. Um, uh, Gary the Third says, Starfield is going to be on a new engine, so hopefully there will be less bugs and issues. Now, I, again, I didn't, maybe I did say something about the engine, but like, I tell you right now from years of experience of reviewing video games, the new engine often means, leads to more bugs because people don't know how to use the new <laughs> engine and they don't know what will happen with it. So like, let's not do that. And then Bander SN says, don't listen to what anyone says. The meta cricket is definitely a cricket, a beautiful cricket. Uh, these so-called biologists don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, these dumb biologists out here. I and hate he's biologists. a nanobiologist, not a cricket biologist. And you I know? Think a cricket <laughs> you're you're, you're making a good point. He is not a cricket biologist. <laughs> 100%. Um, that's it for today's show, everybody. Believe it or not, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, down a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show ad free. You can get the show with the exclusive post show me and Roger are about to do right after this. Of course, if you don't want to follow us over there, you don't want to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can't toss us any bucks. It's no big deal. You can get each and every episode of the show for free. You could watch it live as we record it on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Give us your Amazon Prime subscription. You could watch it on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Please subscribe, like, share, and hit the bell. You could listen on a podcast service. Please rate us, subscribe there too. You know, go through a Spotify on the app now. You can leave stuff that helps out a lot and then of course you could get it on roosterteeth.com i never fucking go there i don't know what their buttons do so i don't know what's happening you know what i mean i just Craig, called you. we are so featured on rooster teeth it is fucking hilarious because the way that the app works like i have the app on my like apple tv when you pull it up when you pull up roosterteeth.com like it's just whatever the most recent uploaded video is yeah nice. guess who uploads 10 videos a day yeah us <laughs> guess who does it everyone else guess who's on the west coast after austin time us. Nice. So anytime it's nighttime, if you load up the Rooster Teeth app, it's just a bunch of kind of funny videos and it's our dumb faces. I, I made a lot of headlines last week for telling somebody to fuck off and I'll do it right now to fuck Michael Jones. All right. That's what you get. Wow. That's what you get, Michael Jones. No, what? I like Mike. No, I, I didn't like say him. I didn't love him. I just said fuck him. I know. You know? Yeah, I guess you're right. You are. <laughs> you're making solid points. Now. If I'm going to pick a fight over there with somebody I don't like, fuck Alfredo Diaz. <laughs> oh my God. I hate you so much. <laughs> Tomorrow's hosts are me and bless i'm trying to get him off of it and of course what i did is i i read your comments you all loved lucy james from gamespot.com so i said hey lucy you want to come help out and she said no so i'm still looking probably be janet maybe i don't know i'll figure it out don't worry about it don't cool. worry your pretty little heads tomorrow somebody else will be in tim's nightmare chair and i will just fucking go to town and i'll be like here's some news <laughs> who do you want me to call you know what i mean there's a cricket <laughs> oh, Meta, Meta Cricket ain't stopping how many followers has he got now Met, Met, Meta Cricket only has 284 followers which is frankly insulting yeah all right hold on a second before i, I was gonna let you guys go and you could go see whatever they're doing on the, the oh they're getting ready for this no what are you doing next what, uh, it, we're no. finally finishing metal gear rising uh because we were stuck in the final boss fight the last time we did it so we're finally doing that and then we might just play a bunch of switch games to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the That's switch cute. um and this uh, right is a now, heads up for the oh, people watching live uh the stream will stop for like a like 30 seconds and then we'll come back because i messed up a, a setting with my computer that i gotta fix and that requires me to unplug uh an ethernet cable what i wanted to say here right is that 
right now we have 1400 plus kind of funny diehards watching us live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and we can't thank you enough for your love and support but in the same breath i can also say what the fuck's wrong with you people because right now meta cricket only has on my thing 304 followers on twitter and i mean oh i don't have twitter oh i don't have Twitter. it's free you open it up you follow the cricket he's happy you're follow happy i'm cricket. happy you know what i mean yeah, I think we and that's the thing, too, is like, and again, we love your support here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You're the greatest audience in the world. You're all a bunch of fucking freeloaders. You're not over on Patreon right now getting it. You know what I mean? Fucking help us out with the freebie. You know what I mean? You got the mm-hmm. Amazon Prime, too. You order your fucking paper towels. You get the two day delivery for free. Why aren't you giving us the gaming prime subscription for free right now? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Billy, the pizza going through Meta Cricket is the ticket. That's good. And then, yeah, it's Dre says LMAO. He does not have a subscriber badge next to him. That's what I'm Meta talking Cricket about. You know what I mean? The ticket, man. That is. Oh. <laughs> Should I add that to the uh, description of this? <laughs> what is wrong with us this week? And mainly <laughs> us, I mean me. What is going on? I need to get help. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a post show to do over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. But until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.